teams of professionals to fight your claim. If you want to know what your case is really worth, I'm Spencer Callahan. I'd like to help. Spencer Callahan is the one to see. Call 387 LA filing number 16-7970. WNXX, Jackson, KNXX, Donaldsonville, and WDGLHD2 Baton Rouge. This hour brought to you by Spencer Callahan Injury Lawyers. LA 21-12681. Offices in Baton Rouge. Now, the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Rouse's Supermarkets on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Locking down the middle of the day. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios, this is Hunt Palmer. Welcome in. <clears throat> That's a good start. Welcome in. On Palmer coming to you from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studio downtown in the capital city on this Thursday. Means we're brought to you by Rouse's Markets. Appreciate Taylor for Taylor Sharp for jumping in yesterday um, and uh, and covering for me. You heard it happening on Tuesday. The voice was not doing so hot, and woke up yesterday and the throat was on fire. I didn't feel bad, but you got a two-year-old at home who had to go in for a very routine, as routine goes for two-year-olds, um, operation today. Just wanted to get everything checked out. Plus, I couldn't really talk. <laughs> the voice was just awful. Um, so I, I, I had Taylor sit in yesterday, um, but knew I'd be back uh, today. I, I'm, here's what I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for. I mean, it's not going to sound great today. That's just the, two ways about it. I got the water here. I got the cough button. We'll make it work. But Beck, when was the last time you heard my voice like significantly compromised? Uh, I feel like it was last year. It was last year. It was in June. Yep. In Omaha. Yep. Last time I sounded, it was a little worse than this, but but pretty compromised was in Omaha. And that worked out pretty good it did. for LSU. It was the Monday show of the championship game. I was at the Ameristar, and they were battling a ton of adversity, having gotten absolutely blown off the field. And I showed up, played hurt like a champion. You did. Took control of the show. And by take control of the show, I mean I had six guests in eight segments. And uh, then went and watched LSU win a national championship. So now this baseball team is is just battling adversity. They're in a rough spot. But I'm coming to work. I'm coming to play. I'm coming to do my business. And hopefully this is what kickstarts the LSU baseball team. My ability to show up and sit in a comfortable chair and yap into a microphone for two weeks without 100% vocal cord strength. That's that's what I'm I'm taking from this. Do we feel okay about that? Yeah, I think that sounds good. <laughs> we got Jacob Beck and Jordan Kitches back there on the ones and twos. I can I can sense your uh, your energy back. It's infectious. Uh, I've got Luke Johnson coming up in 15 minutes. We're knocking on the door of draft time. The draft is one week from today, so we'll talk to Luke about what uh, he's hearing and what he may expect to see. Joe Healy talking SEC baseball at 1:30. Uh, he'll be with us. Uh, of course, he from D1 Baseball's SEC Extra team. I do want to mention the Pels. Sorry, Jordan, but I wasn't here yesterday to do so. So. We will do a little bit of that. Portal's starting to heat up. Um, there's some defensive tackles that are going in. I'll give my thoughts on some of that. Chris Blair will join us from Columbia, Missouri at 2.15 to talk a little LSU baseball. Last week, he gave us a starting pitching rotation, so we'll see if that's the case again this week. So lots and lots to get to on this Thursday. We are presented by Rouse's Markets. Um, yesterday, Jay Johnson held a press conference, and usually his midweek press conferences go somewhere in the neighborhood of 11, 14, 17 minutes. And yesterday, he went half an hour. And I, I wouldn't suggest that any of it was completely earth-shattering. I, uh, I have never seen Jay at this point of a season with the record where it is. I don't think that's ever happened in his coaching career. Um, but he seemed upbeat. He seemed positive, And that was the outlook that he said he was conveying to his team. He's really not, based on what he's saying publicly, giving tough love in this situation. This is a, a raise them up, help them out, be there to support these guys in a tough time. And that's what he continued to convey yesterday and conveyed to the guys this morning when he joined off the bench. You can catch that on One Demand wherever you find your podcast. You want to go back and listen to the entire segment there with him uh, every single Thursday morning. Um, but he said a few things that I really agreed with. And I've been open about some things that I haven't necessarily agreed with uh, with Jay. But more often than not, I, I do agree with him. First of all, because he knows a lot more about baseball than me. Um, but second of all, I just I think that a lot of times we're on the same wavelength. And you know, the first 
Um, there's an interesting quote in this bite, and then he surrounds it with context clues, but it's about how he feels about how they're playing and what their record says they are. And he uses this quote in there that we're, we're not that far away, but we are far away, and then he kind of elaborates on where his team sits halfway through SEC play. We're not that far away, and yet we're far away. And what I mean by that is, like, there's some optimism and going, like, if a team is at that point and you're playing them on the road and you're the defending champ and you're getting everything they have, I mean, you eliminated them in Omaha, you're getting everything that they have, that there were some wins right there. So then how do you get over the hump? It comes back to baseball, and it comes back to those inflection points, and it comes back to helping guys be in tune with what they need to do to execute. And right now, like, they need my support. Like, they, they do, and that's what they're going to get. You know, I, I realize that we don't play for moral victories around here, and, and I don't think that's the lane we're talking about, so I don't want you to misconstrue what I'm saying. It's like, oh, well, they're playing hard. It'll be okay. Like, that's not what I'm saying. The, the expectation on here is to, to win. But they've gotten blown out three times, absolutely dusted three times. They've won three games. And in the other nine, it's been pretty competitive. And they just continue to come out on the wrong end of it. And I don't know if it's going to change. The odds are it probably will, but it won't change enough. That's what the odds would suggest. But this is new information on Jay Johnson's approach to coaching LSU's baseball team. And I'm fascinated by it because it's something new that I learned. I know that Paul Maneri put the words Omaha all over that stadium where the players work out in the locker room, team room. Like there was no like one step at a time. Like they had Omaha written all over the place. And I also know that he would map out situations that could get LSU a national seed or get LSU a host seed or get LSU into the NCAA tournament like weeks in advance. He would write, well, here's who who Arkansas is playing. Here's who... Uh, Texas A&M's playing. Here's who we play. Here's here's what th- this has to happen. Like, he was very open with what had to be done to get where you need to be. I don't believe Les Miles, in a completely different sport, would ever do something like that and certainly wouldn't talk about it with the media. There's no right or wrong way. Both those guys won a national championship. But I'm learning how Jay handles things. And I found out going into the Tennessee weekend Jay did address with his team how they should go about reaching postseason play. Sunday or Saturday, I think it was Saturday, came in for game three and I was like, okay, look, like, here's what we need to do to play in the postseason. And then I drew out the entire schedule. And then it's like, okay, then you're going to a regional where you're not playing a team from our league. I think we're going to win. Like, honestly, like this, there's 12 teams, maybe 13, maybe 14 in our league that could win a regional. The problem is we're playing all of them. And just the way the schedule, we're playing the top half of them. It's just the way that it worked out. It's no, it is what it is. So we got to step up, find a way to get through this stretch. We've been great outside of the league. I think we're 20 and three. There's not many teams in the country that are 20 and three non-conference. Um, so we kind of went to that. But then it's about knowing what's best for your team. Like, and what's best for a team is getting them like, hey, man, they have the support of our coaches. We're going to keep trying to, like, dial in their play and keep them in the moment. That's interesting. And it's true. And it's something I talk about every single May when I'm breaking down LSU baseball. Like, the SEC has lapped the field. And I know that y'all don't care about the fact that LSU schedule's hard because just win. And I'm perfectly happy with that attitude. That's the way that you should feel. It does not change the reality. And LSU's regional draws, unless they send you to Corvallis to play the number one seed in the country, are good. It's a lot of Southern Miss. That Oregon team was was okay. Would I take four or five SEC teams to beat them in a weekend series? Yeah. Did LSU go up there and win? Yeah. Are you terrified to go play a TCU or whatever, I mean, Ted Bottoms falling out of Texas? Are you petrified to go play a Florida State team that was awful last year? Year to year, transfer portal, new coach, like the whole thing. But like, you're not going to College Station for a regional. You're not going to Knoxville for a regional. 
You're not going to Fayetteville for regional. You're not allowed. So if you just get in, all of a sudden the draw does become more favorable. It's just unlikely that they do it. But it's got to start now if they're going to. And Jay spoke to kind of finding something that could spark, quote-unquote, momentum with this team. In baseball, that has to do with the guy that's starting on the game on the mound that day. Every time Luke takes the mound, our team feels like we're going to win. That's why it's tough to lose uh, last Saturday where we have a run in and we have two guys on with nobody out and don't score. And then you're just you're leaving it to one one pitch, one play. I really think it has to do with that. But let's let's be honest, too, like as human beings, whether I don't want them to like succumb to their feelings or whatnot, like that's a real thing. And if they're stepping in the box with a clear mind, total confidence because we've had some success and it eliminates a lot of the crap and then you get the best. And then it starts to create whatever contagious hitting. There is something to it. I've leaned to it. It's about like the play in that day, but the mindset has a lot to do with the play. And if you believe you're going to win and you believe you're going to be successful, you got a chance. If you don't, you have no chance. That is a two pronged answer, and I'll take both of them. Um, the first thing is about momentum being your next day starting pitcher. LSU is very likely going to start Luke Holman tomorrow. I'd be shocked if they don't. And that's going to put LSU in a real good position against a team that doesn't hit a lick. To, to win the game on Friday. They may not. They should. And then your momentum, as he said, is the next day starting pitcher. And that's probably going to be Gage Jump. And he just hasn't been great. His Mississippi State, he, he labored. And he gave up four earned runs in, tw- in three and two-thirds. Couldn't get out of the fourth inning. Against Florida was his best outing. Five and two-thirds, so worked into the six. Only gave up two earned runs and, and struck out eight guys. At Arkansas, seven hits and four runs in three and two-thirds. Against Vanderbilt, worked into the six, but gave up six hits and five runs. The strikeout numbers have not been super awesome in the last three games. Three against Arkansas, three against Vanderbilt, five at Tennessee when he gave up five earned runs in four innings. He's going to have to turn the corner if you're going to to become better. And I, I like his matchup against Missouri and Auburn the next two weeks better than I like it against Arkansas and Tennessee. Fair? I do. The other piece to that is the clear mind thing. And that's what's going to be very, very, very difficult for this team. How can you clear your mind at the plate if you're at bat, you you beat Missouri on Friday, Saturday. You're down three runs in the fifth. It just feels like, and maybe, I mean, I cover the team. I don't play on the team. So maybe I'm overstepping my bounds here. But it feels like I would dig in knowing, man, if I don't get a hit here, like, we may not make the SEC tournament. That's, that is what can weigh on you. And I realize that every team is really playing for something. You're playing, if you're really good, you're playing to make sure you get a top eight seed. If you're a step behind that, you're playing to host a regional. If you're a step behind that, you're playing to get into a regional. So, there's pressure for the end game almost anywhere you are unless you rack up so many wins early that it becomes inconsequential. Arkansas is working on that. But it's just a lot of pressure to dig in each and every time. Now, when your team better be perfect or else you could be playing for nothing the last three weeks of the season. That's just really tough. So there are a ton of obstacles for this team, no doubt about it. But you're going to play a pretty bad team as SEC teams go on Friday. We'll break the series down tomorrow and talk about starting pitch matchups because we'll have them. Uh, and we'll also talk about it with Chris Blair coming up. But um, interesting stuff I thought from Jay yesterday. Our baseball breakdowns all season long are brought to you by uh, Pluckers. Try uh, Pluckers. Get the uh, Breggy Bomb. Creole Crush. Breggy's Creole Crush. Brought to you by the uh, Breggy Bomb seasoning. Nicholson location just south of campus and the Mall Louisiana location right there on Blue Bonnet. Fantastic stuff. If you want to watch LSU baseball all weekend long, they will have every single game on at Pluckers. All right, we'll take a time out. When we come back, we'll talk to Luke Johnson about the Saints on the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Audio, video, security solutions. Check them out online at avssla.com. If you're not going to Pluckers to watch LSU or the Pels, you can watch it at home. Well, you want to have the best home viewing situation you possibly can. And if you're like me, you don't even know what's possible. You've heard the term surround sound. 
But y- do you really know what you're getting into? Most some do, some don't. Let the folks at Audio Video Security Solutions just come to your home and tell you what they can do. That's what they did for me. Came in, Mitchell Fisher, the owner, walked around, said, okay, where would you like to have some sound? And I kind of gave him some situations of things we do on a day-to-day basis, whether it's cooking, spending time outside with Myers. And he's like, all right, well, here's what we can do. We can put some speakers here and put some speakers here. You can control them all with your phone on an app right here. And that's that's where we can get started. And I said, that's awesome. They came out. It was about a day and a half job. They were done. Everything was cleaned up. And now we enjoy music outside when Myers is running around with a baseball bat. We enjoy sound. We're in there cooking some uh, dinner. And if you want to have sound in your living room for the awesome in-home viewing experience of your favorite team, Audio Video Security Solutions is your best bet. Go to their Instagram page, AVSS underscore BR. Pictures of their awesome work all over the place right there. they got some great stuff. You can check them out online at AVSSLA.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Bayou Ford has $10,000 off F-150s, $10,000 off the new F-150 truck, plus 1.9% for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows. Charles Haniger joined me and Jimmy out for the Friday edition of Live at Lunch from Rafino's on Highland Road. It's do or die for the Pelicans in the play-in and LSU baseball on the road at Missouri. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. Friday on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. One hundred four five ESPN Baton Rouge and the Baton Rouge Clinic bring you the Dreams Come True Radiothon. Dreams Come True is an organization designed to help grant dreams for children with life-threatening illnesses and their families. The Dreams Come True Radiothon is presented today by Service Chevrolet. Donate today at one hundred four five ESPN.com. 
You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Rouse's Supermarkets. Yeah, I led the show talking about how unbelievably courageous it is for me to, to take the microphone just one day after uh, this this coughing voice situation that we got going. And I'm being compared to Warren Morris in the chat. I don't know if that comparison really is apples to apples. I, I think it is. Morris took weeks to come back from that hand injury. One day, I'm back in the seat. Weeks. Okay, but, but 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 was he talking into a microphone for two hours? No, no. He, how much? I mean, he stands around second base. He hit like yeah. what four times in that game, and then like seriously, it, it was he was already healed. His hand had healed. Yeah, I'm he in the fine. middle of this thing. Like he we're playing fine. through it. I mean, I, so you know, you, you decide whatever you want to feel. Kurt Gibson was also brought up. I mean, the guy had won it bad. He was in the box for what? Yeah, a minute and a half. This is two hours in the pressure cooker, but I'm going to make it through. <laughs> Let's talk to Luke Johnson. Speaking of courageous, Luke Johnson joins us on the Jim's Fires Hotline talking Saints. How are you, Luke? Man, it is uh, maybe one of my life's greatest honors to be a part of your Michael Jordan flu game here. It's just truly, truly special stuff. Uh, went, to the, went to the doctor's office, got swabbed for strep throat. That's not real fun. Um, and, you know, I'm right back in the saddle one day later because we don't have strep and we're going to figure it out. So we'll have to let you do most of the talking in this segment if that's okay with you. Um, it's time to start talking uh, draft in, in earnest because next week when we talk, it'll be draft day. Um, do you see any situation where New Orleans does not take an offensive tackle in the first round? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, it, it's a situation I don't think the Saints want to be in. Um, but I, I think if you look ahead of them, it, look, there's, there's a lot of different ways it can go. Um, I think everybody is really expecting four quarterbacks and three wide receivers in that first 10 picks. Uh, but I think there's a lot of room for uh, for things to kind of go haywire beyond that. Um, Los Angeles Chargers could take a tackle. Uh, the Tennessee Titans probably will take a tackle. Um, yeah, I think you could talk yourself into the Chicago Bears taking the blindside protector of Caleb Williams for the next 10 years. Um, you could talk yourself into the Raiders taking a tackle. Like I, I think if, if all that stuff happens, which is possible, or the Saints just going to be like, yeah, I guess we're going to take the fifth best tackle in this draft. I mean, maybe, but maybe not. Maybe they're like, well, we think Brock Bowers is going to be a stud for the next ten years in the NFL, and we'll figure tackle out. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely a chance that something like that happens. I don't think it's likely, but I think it's possible. If that tackle run happens in front of them, we know how this organization has operated. We also know that they don't have a ton of draft capital here. Can they move up if? three of them or two of them are gone. Yeah, I think they can. Um, it's just a matter of uh, when they are going to decide not to, not to keep like borrowing from tomorrow to pay for today. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, we're seeing right now that they're in a situation where they badly need depth on this roster and they need, they need impact players in a lot of positions and they have two picks in the top 150. So, you know, I, I think, We've seen them kind of take a little bit of a more cautious approach in free agency this year than we've seen in years past. Um, yeah, a lot of the guys they're signing are, are you could argue, are bottom of the roster guys or guys you're not expecting to make big contributions this year. Um, so, yeah, they, they could absolutely move into the you know, top 11, uh, 10 picks uh, if, if they feel like there's going to be a chance they don't get a guy at tackle. Um, I just don't know if it's really the smartest move right now. Uh, just considering everything they need and, and they're they're kind of constant uh, you know, digging out of their their holes of their aggressive decision making. I realize the Rams last year were in a, a massive rebuild. They had traded off a lot of their stars and were trying to figure a lot of things out. But when I was actually doing some research for Plucker Sports Trivia on Tuesday, I looked at all the draft classes from last year. They made 14 picks last year. I'm not asking for the Saints to make 14 picks, but like, how many of those picks towards back into the draft do you think they're actually going to use? I mean, this is like kind of going into what we were just talking. Yeah, about. that's like, that's I, what I I'm getting. At. There's, yeah, there's like a there. There was a really good story in the Athletic uh, this week about you know how teams like the Saints um, and a lot of other teams out there they zero in on their guy and and yeah, you know, we heard Jeff Ireland talking about it at the Senior Bowl. He's just like, look. When you have when you have a guy that you you have conviction about, you do what you can to take him. You don't worry about like I'm asking more picks and give, and losing out on the opportunity to take the guy. But the fact of the matter is, I mean, the draft is a crapshoot, um, and a lot of factors go into whether guys are good. I mean, I mean, who knows if Peyton Turner never suffers 
three season ending injuries, maybe he's a really good player. Uh, you know, um, I, I, there's, there's just, there's so many different variables that go into whether a guy makes it or not. Um, so I think giving yourself a lot more like ammo, a lot more chances to, to see if these guys can stick is a smart way to do it. The problem is, it, you know, obviously it, it becomes a lot harder to do that in round five, six, and seven. You know, the, the Rams last year, uh, you know, their draft class was awesome and they hit on a lot of guys in the mid rounds. I, I mean, I, I think uh, they got, I'm looking at it right now. Puka Nakua was was a fifth rounder. Yeah, Puka Nakua was the fifth. They got Steve Avila in what the second or third. Um, Kobe Turner had nine sacks for him as an interior rusher last year. He was drafted like the third or fourth round. Third round. Yeah, and they got uh, Byron Young, who was also uh, really successful for him. They got him in the mid rounds. That doesn't happen very often. the The draft class of the 2017 Saints does not happen very often. Where, where you're hitting on every single player, no matter where you're picking in the draft. But if you give yourself a lot more, a lot more cracks at it, like you're you're improving your chances of hitting on one of these guys. Um, which which is why, like I've I've been an advocate for the last couple of years of finally trading back. <laughs> I don't think they should do it in the first round, but like if if you're in the second round and there's like four or five guys you like, what's the, what's the problem with moving back ten spots? To um, me, and, this and is get, just get another pick. Yeah, to me, like that's the only way. And I use air quotes here out of this for the Saints. It's not by trading more and going to get one dude who might be able to rush the passer. Like you need a lot of guys. Yeah. Yeah, and they need impact guys. Um which like again, you you're having a really you're going to have a really hard time finding those in the 5th round. Like Puka Nakua does not come around very often. Um so I you know, I, I just it, that, that that would be like the the most obvious way to do it for me, just considering you know, their their financial situation and you know, the fact that guys are going to get more expensive. Derek Carr is going to be more expensive. Alvin Kamara, Ryan Ramchick, I mean, who knows what's going on with them? Like you got to stock your roster with as many low cost options as possible. And they've done a nice job finding guys after the draft. Like they've they've always had like three or four guys who are contributors. Do they 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 mine out out of the undrafted free agent ranks? Um, but I, you know, I just I think they should they should see that as like okay. We're we're actually good at evaluating players. So let's give ourselves uh, more chances to do it. Uh, what other position outside of Brock Bowers? That's kind of the consensus. Is like if that's there, that may be a, a, a an offense changing type pick. Is there another position that you would be okay with the Saints taking in the first round? I don't think so. I, yeah. I mean, I think you could look at their their roster and say they have they have you know, kind of softer needs kind of across the board. Um, but I, I don't like. I don't think I would be happy with uh, it, like Jerjon Newton or uh, with a kid from Texas, um, uh, the other defensive tackle. Um, or yeah, I think I like I like Leatu Latu from UCLA, but it just seems like um, the the other positions are way more pressing. It, like other premium positions that you need to address. Um, yeah, I think for me, it, it's it's either tackle or pass catcher because. If the tackles are gone, the pass catcher is going to be there. Yeah, you know, Brock Bowers, or you know, even even if like the unseen thing happens and one of those top three receivers falls, um, you know, you're going to have an option there as a pass catcher. I, I don't think the other guys really match up to to the collection of talent at 14. Now, 45, it can go anywhere. Like, uh, you know, they could take a safety or a defensive tackle or an edge rusher or you know, an interior offensive lineman. I, I mean, it can go anywhere. Um, but I, I think I, I would be astonished if 14 ends up being something other than a receiver, or pass catcher, or uh, offensive tackle. Is Equiminius St. Brown, is he a factor on next year's team? I don't think they can go into accounting on it. Okay. Right? I, I, I think the same is true for Cedric Wilson or you know Stanley Morgan, the other receivers they signed. Yeah, I, I think Equiminius St. Brown, he's, he's like, topped out at like you know 30 catches in the season like i don't think you can like think he's just going to be a, a high level contributor I, I would feel a lot better about at perry uh than him and i, I just think that like they have like brown, st brown is a, a, a bit of a taller receiver but i like i think they do they still do have like this this hole on the roster for somebody who's who's going to be you know a, a contested catch guy who's going to move the chains when you really need it um you know they were hoping and praying Mike Thomas would be that guy for him the last four years. And it just obviously never worked out. So I, I think that's something that like, like Brock Bowers could give you a little bit of that. Yeah. I really like the idea of somebody like Keon Coleman in the second round. Like he fits exactly what they've been looking for. 
Um, yes, I think they still need to add to that. I don't think you can count on, on those free agent receivers that like being that guy for you. He's Luke Johnson, covers the Saints uh, for The Advocate down there in NOLA. We'll talk next week on draft day. Thanks, man. Sounds good, man. Hey, good luck with the rest of your show. I'm going to power think. through. It's going to be an unbelievable performance. Virtuoso stuff. <laughs> See you, man. Luke. He's Luke Johnson, covering the Saints for The Advocate. Uh, Rouses, the official grocer of the New Orleans Saints, whether it's draft night next week or just this weekend, settling down having some people over for a birthday party, you want to boil some crawfish, they got them over there at Rouse's, both live and boiled. Do your weekend grocery shopping at Rouse's. We're always here uh, on Thursdays um, telling you about Rouse's, and that's a great day to go in, get your shopping done. If you don't have time to go in the store, the Rouse's app is always a fantastic option to go ahead and get your grocery shopping done. Your personal shop will do it for you, and they'll bring it right on out at your uh, assigned pickup time. You'll pull right up. They'll walk it right to your car. As long as you spend 35 bucks. Not an extra dollar out of your pocket for the curbside pickup. Awesome, awesome stuff over there at Rouse's official market of the New Orleans Saints. When we come back, Joe Healy talking SEC baseball next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. This is LeBear's Baton Rouge Casino this spring for all your hoops and hockey playoff action. We've got the biggest screens, the best food and drink. Plus, we're giving away pin cash bonuses and prizes to pin play rewards members. You're not a member? No big deal. Just join today by downloading and registering for the pin play app from the App Store. Unlock all the fun, including a chance to win up to $2,000 in pin cash. All this and more. Make LeBear's Baton Rouge Casino your spring sports viewing headquarters. Must be 21 or older. Can problem? Call 100-522-4700. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs, even in the case of an after-hours emergency. The light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, Retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call them. 
Moscona inviting you to join us for Thursday's AFR. The transfer portal is open. Four Tigers have already jumped in. We'll have the absolute latest. And LSU running back commit JT Lindsay joins the show. Hopefully you will as well. 3 to 6. 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Rouse's Supermarkets. Every Thursday about this time, we chat with our guy Joe Healy from D1 Baseball's SEC Extra Team. If you're looking for SEC baseball info and coverage, no better spot than SEC Extra over D1 Baseball, the Highway to Hoover podcast, wherever you get your podcast. It is Joe and Mark Healy a couple times a week. Again, he joins us every Thursday, and he's here on the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Joe, how are you? Doing pretty well, Hunt. I appreciate it. I'm glad you didn't ask me how I was doing. That's very good because things are not so good in Baton Rouge at the moment. Um, I mean, is it full-blown panic time? Yeah, I mean, just from the standpoint of you now have to start to steal wins, right? I mean, if you, if you use the old adage of, hey, win your series at home, don't get swept on the road, and then when you face the absolute you know, worst of the worst teams in the league, like see if you can steal sweeps at home and win series on the road, but, you know, LSU is in a precarious position now where record-wise they are one of the worst teams in the league and they just don't really have enough time to kind of use that old, you know, don't get swept and then win your series kind of deal. So they're in a situation where a sentence that you wouldn't think would be uttered all that often, they must win series this weekend in Columbia, Missouri, uh, is suddenly a big one because you're in a tough spot if you're LSU where you kind of feel like you need to get a sweep here. And that's even if you should do it or could do it, uh, you know, that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself to go in here and know that, you know, hey, we have to win every game this weekend to get to get back on track. So from that standpoint, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of put up or shut up time. They haven't been 3-12 and 12 at any point the last two years, but they have had a couple bumps in the road in different situations the last two years. But the issue was very, very clear. It was pitching in the middle of the game in the starting rotation two years ago after Mikhail Hilliard and before Paul Gervais and Eric Razelman. Last year it was what's after Skeen's you know, what what do we need to do in, in terms of the next two games? Offense was great across the board in those two years. Now it's like sometimes the pitching's okay, but then they don't hit. Sometimes the hitting's okay, then they, they don't pitch. When you look at LSU on the numbers, when you watch LSU, I mean, do you have something that seems like a bigger concern than everything else? I mean, it's kind of a, kind of an ethereal thing to put your hard to put your finger on, but to me, it's just that it feels like the team's sleepwalking a little bit. And that's not totally fair. Like guys are playing hard. No one wants to be three and 12. Like, you know, we can critique the play, but I don't think anybody's necessarily thinking that anybody's out there dogging it, but they do. They just do feel dazed. Like they're all looking around at each other saying like, who's going to, who's going to lead? Like, who do I look to here? Like, what, what, what do we need to do to get back on track? And they just don't have any answers for that. Now I will say, I do think the situation with the pitching where you basically know you've got to win the game in which Luke Holman starts, which also oftentimes is the game in which Griffin Herring pitches, Mm -hmm. like that creates a lot of pressure on you have to win that game because pitching wise, it's a little bit of a crapshoot otherwise. And and so I I do think there is a situation where in games where LSU fires all of his bull, all of the bullets, it creates a two pronged problem. One is that, you know, you have to win that game. And second, you know, you're not going to have a ton left the rest of the weekend. Florida loses another series last weekend, one in which they really can't get anybody out. Um, they, uh, they give up a 10 spot, a, a nine spot, and then another nine spot. Uh, is there an answer for Kevin O'Sullivan's pitching staff at this point? I really don't think so. And, and that's, that makes it sound like it's a really bad situation, but the flip side argument is that like, it's not like they're untalented, right? I mean, they've got dudes in there tossing in 95, 97 as freshmen. Like they're, they, those guys are going to have games where they get people out. Now it hasn't happened a lot. I get that. Um, but they're not out there with a bunch of slop tossing right-handers. They're actually pretty healthy on the mound, frankly. Like they have a lot of guys. they just don't have a lot of consistent guys. The biggest problem for Florida for me is that if you'll allow me to just do a little bit of reading off the schedule, um, their next five weekends are at Vanderbilt, at Arkansas, Tennessee at home, Kentucky at home, Georgia on the road. I didn't realize that. So so they are seven and eight in the league. And you talk about having to steal some games, like my goodness, they're going to have to steal some games. And oh, by the way, their RPI is 43, which is like real borderline. So they might also have an RPI problem when it's all said and done. So yeah, I never imagined the Gators being in this spot, but but yeah, they're in a bit of a pickle. 
Can they find a way to get extra credit for wins if Caglione hits at 500 feet? If, if they get that, then they probably have a chance to, to make some they're noise. In yeah, they're in great shape. If that's a bonus. Because that guy, yeah, that guy can run a ball out of the ballpark. But yeah, 516 uh, feet. I mean, it's, it's insane. Is Vanderbilt any good? Vanderbilt, you said? Yeah. Uh, when they get to pitching, yes. That, that's the trouble, though, is they, they don't have – a lot of alternative ways to win games. Like their formula is pretty narrow. Like they, they have to pitch it really well. Um, they have to play clean baseball. They, they don't have a lot of margin for error. They can't really fall behind. And, and the offense thing, it's like we fixated, me included, fixated on the lack of power, but it was brought to my attention uh, last week that like the other problem is they don't really walk. So like you're in a situation where truly if Vanderbilt's going to put up a crooked number, they have to string together like five or six singles. And that's just a really tough way to live. And, Last weekend, I mean, sure, they ran into A&M, who's playing better than anybody right now, but um, that was just a really bad look for them. And as soon as they got bad starts, they were just done. You know, they were done in the fourth or fifth inning of all those games. And I think that's what happens when they don't get the pitching they need. I think they're going to be kind of what they've been the last couple of years, which is, okay, maybe they're a borderline host team, maybe a good two seed, and it's going to be all about can you keep the opposition to, you know, two, three, four runs? Because any more than that, and, and Vanderbilt's not exactly equipped to win that way. Let's talk about a couple of series this weekend before I get you to tell me something about Missouri. Uh, Tennessee is at Kentucky. That is uh, two heavyweights over in the East at this point in the schedule. Um, things about to get tougher on the Kentucky Wildcats. It starts this weekend. Yeah, and, and it's, it's uh, I'll be there for that series. I'm excited for it. Arguably, I don't know, I'm not a Kentucky baseball historian, but I'll have to ask around this weekend, maybe the biggest series in Kentucky baseball history. I mean, that's on the table, I would have to imagine. Um, so that's interesting. But yeah, to me, the, the thing about it is, is we have to understand that Kentucky can lose this series, and it doesn't necessarily mean that what they've done was fraudulent or any of that stuff. Like I, I do think they're real in a way they weren't always last year. I think you and I talked a lot about how last year, like ah, this is a little bit of a house of cards. They're going to come up against teams that are just more talented, yada, yada. We saw that in the super regional. This feels a little bit different. I think the most interesting matchup this weekend is actually Tennessee's lineup versus the ballpark because Kentucky proud park plays pretty big. Um, the weather is going to be warm, but not crazy warm. I think that might help Kentucky keep the ball in the ballpark a little bit. Um, so if you're an offense like Kentucky's and you're getting a lot of warning track flyouts or you're, you know, starting to have bad approach, I think that's exactly what Kentucky wants because Kentucky's going to try to keep the ball on the ground. They're going to throw a ton of strikes. They're going to field it. Um, they want you to take big swings and fly out deep to the outfield because their ballpark will hold it. Monster series win for Alabama last weekend as they take down Arkansas. You were looking at this two weekend stretch with Arkansas and Texas A&M thinking, man, they could go south for the tide if it already hasn't. Um, now they welcome in Texas A&M, who you mentioned is playing as good as anybody. How do you see that one this week? Yeah, I think it's for, that put Alabama back on course where they kind of need need to be. And now with a, another home series against a and I'm pretty confident they're going to get at least a, a game there. Um, and you're you're in good shape, especially they're, they've got a 20-something RPI. Like So that last series last weekend really did do wonders for getting them back in position where they could be a postseason team again. And, oh, by the way, when we talk about finishes, they've got the opposite. They've got Ole Miss, Mississippi State, LSU, and Auburn left. So, you know, if they can just not get swept this weekend, I think they feel pretty confident that, hey, we can land this plane and at least be back in the regionals again, which for, you know, an Alabama program that had been down for a long time, back-to-back regionals is not anything to sneeze at for them. So, yeah, big series for them. And with A&M right now, they're just the most well-rounded team in the conference. I mean, they, you know, they showed it um, last weekend with the way they held Vanderbilt off the off the scoreboard and scored a whole bunch of runs themselves. So, it's not the best pitching staff in the conference, but it's better than I get, often give it credit for, better than a lot of people think. It's not just a team that's bashing a bunch of runs and winning that way. Speaking of that, uh, a lot of people uh, a little cranky with Nate Yeski at this point. And look, same people mm-hmm. were cranky with Wes Johnson last year when they couldn't get anybody out in the bullpen. So you lose games, somebody's got to be held accountable for it. But what do you make of the fact that Yeski showed up in College Station and they walked a ton of guys and couldn't get outs? He leaves, they're really good, and LSU is struggling so mightily on the mound at times. Yeah, it is interesting. And, and so w- with the caveat of, you know, neither you or I are a pitching coach level evaluator of, of pitching. Let's get that out of the way first. Nate Yeski's forgotten more about teaching pitching than you and I will ever know, mm-hmm. just for those listeners who, you know, want to throw that at us. But I do wonder if, I mean, look, especially in the SEC where the strike zones are getting called really tight, we know that. I wonder if there's a little bit of a lack of adjustment. And it's not just Nate Yeski. I think there are other pitching coaches that fall into this. A lack of adjustment to, hey, you know, we can't, 
you know, bank on getting balls off the corner. We can't bank on necessarily getting the chase we used to get on, on breaking pitches because hitters know that I don't have to defend as much of the outside corner as I normally would in the, in the situation. So I wonder if it is kind of like an antiquated way of looking at calling pitches, approaching hitters, and a little bit of maybe a failure to adjust to the current environment in college baseball. But again, um, more than anything, I'm just, I think I'm with everybody else where it's just like, Hey, this guy is, you know, everyone who knows pitching tells me this guy's one of the best in college baseball. I believe them, but the last two years have been strange. They have. Tell me a thing or two about Missouri. Um, playing with house money. Like when I saw them against Florida, like they're a very positive energy team. I think they understand now, look, they're out there to win games. I get it. They have pride, but I think they kind of understand what they are this year, which is like, Hey, nobody expects anything from us. We honestly maybe don't expect that much from ourselves in terms of record, um, they're really process focused. So you're going to, you're, you're going to face a loose team if you're LSU, like they're not going to go out there and get real tight and real nervous. And, you know, they may or may not be good enough, but they're going to play hard and play loose. The thing is going to have to be pitching like in, in the, it's another big ballpark again. So if the approaches are bad, Missouri will eat you up. Just ask Florida. Um, their best guy is Javen Pimentel. who's a lefty who actually pitched for Jay Johnson yeah. in Arizona. Um, he's probably their best guy, but one name to give LSU fans to watch for is a reliever that has a, a really interesting story. He's a transfer from Florida Southern, but before that had two Juco stops. His name is uh, Ryan Magdish. He's a lefty that has one of those like disappearing elevator fastballs, um, you know, similar to Ty Floyd, right? Where the thing just like looks like it's rising. Um, so it's 93, 94, but it feels like 98, 99 with the carry it has on it. He's been pretty dominant at the back end of the bullpen. So if Mizzou leads, he's one of those closers where if they're leading in the six, they might just hand him the ball and say, hey, get us as far as you can. Um, if they don't pitch well, they Missouri, they will not win the series. But we saw against Florida, they have the pitching to do it. We'll talk next week. Enjoy Lexington, Joe. All right, see you, Hunt. He's Joe Healy, D1 Baseball's SEC Extra Team, Highway to Hoover, uh, appointment listing for me each and every week with him and March Etheridge. He's always here on Thursdays. We'll come back and close out hour number one next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Boudreaux's Electric. Give yourself the peace of mind to know that the power's not going to go out on you. It's such a great thing to know when those ridiculous summer storms that come out of nowhere seemingly. I tell you the story all the time. It happened to me right before LSU started their College World Series against Tennessee. About to sit down, we got home from church, and power goes out. We had to make an immediate exit, go to my wife's friend's in-law's house to watch the game. You don't want that. Get a Generac generator from Boudreaux's Electric. Whether you're here for those storms, whether there's a hurricane that blows through that maybe you leave us without power for three or four days, you don't have to worry about that because the Generac generator will come on and power whatever you need powered, whether it's your whole home or whether it's just a couple of appliances and the air conditioner that you want cooking. That's awesome. It's all there at Boudreaux's Electric. They're going to open that Gonzales store very, very soon. But the number down there in Napoleonville right now, 985-397-1562. 985-397-1562. They service all of our listening area. Just get that Generac generator and give yourself the peace of mind of knowing that you're not going to have to deal with a power outage. Time to worry about that is not after the power is going out. Time to worry about it is now. Call Boudreaux's Electric at 985-397-1562. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020.
Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $11,000 off the new 23 Dodge Charger. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $11,000 off the powerful new Charger. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. When it comes to ending cancer, we push forward, always working together for you. That's why our cancer experts at Oshner have clinically integrated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. This means advanced cancer care, including access to life-saving clinical trials and integrating care to treat the whole you. Introducing Oshner MD Anderson Cancer Center. Long live you. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail. Coming up on Friday's OTB. Let's do a deep dive on LSU, Mizzou. Can baseball right the ship? Man, for Pelicans fans, the day of reckoning is at hand. Can they escape the play-in? Off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. <laughs> You are listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Rouse's Supermarkets. Really cool event that I'm thrilled that I'll be at later this afternoon over at Alumni Hall in Perkins Row. It's an Alumni Hall in Perkins Row. If you're a big LSU Lady Tiger basketball fan, maybe your kiddo, big, uh, big Lady Tigers fan, they'll be there at Alumni Hall signing autographs for free from 6 to 7 tonight. Michaela Williams will be there. Anissa Mora will be there, Samaya Smith, Neo Del Rosario, Izzy Besselman. They will be there. They will have posters there. If you have something you want them to sign, they can do that as well. Fantastic event at Alumni Hall in Perkins Row tonight from 6 to 7 p.m. So come on out and see those ladies and get, uh, get your autograph. All right, Jordan. That was about as bad a three minutes as you could imagine in the play-in opener. You lose the game and you lose your best player. How are we feeling? I feel uh, numb, dead inside, angry. I feel, I feel just because, because it, it makes it worse because beforehand I wasn't working in sports, so a loss I could just go about my day yep. and have to not worry about it. Mm -hmm. But now I come to work mm -hmm. and I have to relive everything. So yeah, I'm dead inside. It it, it doesn't get more dead. So. That's brutal. Um, look, this is a sport that, in my opinion, is the hardest to win in as a small market team. The 100%. NFL rigs the league with your schedule and your draft pick, and because there are so many guys on the team that like small market teams can do just fine. I don't, I don't think there's any difference between Jacksonville and Pittsburgh and L.A. and Chicago. You just got to operate your organization, right? In baseball, yes, the big market teams have a big advantage, but because... In baseball, sometimes the best team doesn't win. You can sneak up and win a series. In basketball, like you got to have the dudes in the yeah. NBA to win a seven-game series. And it feels like the Pels like have a couple guys that could be that, yeah. but they can't play with them. Like they they're never there. Yeah. And it's I don't think it's. Do you think it's the Pels' fault that Zion continues to get hurt? Um, no. Well, last year I did because it felt like Oxner was just playing games. But this year, it's more that. You know, he finally was healthy. Let me let me tell you the, he the part a that 40 hurts. He threw a forty spot. Exactly. Up. He he finally shows up. He's looking like exactly what we wanted, and he gets hurt on a relatively season where he was healthy all year. Yeah, can't I, make it up. I when he came out of the game, 
it looked like like it was an ankle thing, and I was like, this doesn't look serious to me. You got to get back on the court. I didn't when I, and I was at Pluckers, Washington, so I don't have a lot of, of like I'm a little bit res- removed from the TV, but it looks so benign. You find out it's a hamstring, and he's probably done for the rest of the time the Pels are playing. It's just it's it's just become very clear that Zion is just the his his physical build and and how he plays is just it causes problems yeah. because we we saw this with a guy like Derrick Rose who obviously wasn't as big as him but he was an explosive athlete and his body just couldn't stand up to it and and it's just there's no denying it Zion's body cannot withstand the the type of physical just strength and muscle that he that he brings to the game and, and how aggressive he is it's just it's just it's and really some unfortunate guys, some guys have like lebron and russell westbrook have played long 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 careers yeah. as freaks that have so much bounce and explosion but i mean that derrick rose example is is a good one and uh i just i, I get told all the time like oh they should trade zion it's like you can't no sir you, you, you there's no way to get another guy like that because you can't sign one in free agency and nope. you're just not going to luck into Jokic in the second round. It's just that the, the odds of that are, are none. And so you've got to ride this as long as you can. They played well this year. It just uh, looks like it's all going to come to an end tomorrow, I think, unless Brandon Ingram and CJ can show up and do something special. We'll see. Hour two is coming up next. Chris Blair in 20 minutes talking LSU baseball. Come back after Sports Center. It's the Hunt Palmer Show. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $11,000 off the new 23 Dodge Charger. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $11,000 off the powerful new Charger. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 
or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. This is Sports Center. I'm Doug Brown. ESPN's Adrian Warzanowski reports Heat guard Jimmy Butler will be out for several weeks with a right knee injury from last night's loss to the 76ers. The Heat host the Bulls tomorrow night to decide the eighth seed in the East. The Patriots hold the third overall pick in next week's NFL draft. New England's director of scouting is Elliot Wolf. We're open to anything, moving up, moving down. We're open for business in the first round and in every round. Um, we have some holes we feel like we need to fill in the draft, and you know uh, we're, we're a draft and develop team. The more picks we have, the better. Elliot Wolf, who says they'd also be comfortable staying put and taking a quarterback with that third overall pick. ESPN's Adam Schefter reports former Lions safety C.J. Moore is reinstated to the league and can sign with any team. Moore was suspended for a year for violating the NFL's gambling policy. Under a new state law signed today, schools in Virginia will be able to directly pay college athletes for NIL deals. Virginia is the first state to pass such a law. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Kennedy. Coming up Friday, I'll tell you which NBA playoff series I'm most excited about. And here's a hint. It's not Lakers Nuggets. It's Unsportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Gentlemen, may I direct your attention to something quite extraordinary? Now, the Hunt Palmer Show. The Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Brought to you by Rouse's Supermarkets. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. This is Hunt Palmer. Number two, Hunt Palmer Show coming to you from Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studio downtown in the capital city. Working towards the weekend, Chris Blair is in Columbia, Missouri. We'll chat with him coming up in 15 minutes. LSU just announced its starting rotation for the weekend. Gage Jump will start tomorrow, as he did last week in Game 1, and Luke Coleman will go in Game 2. My thoughts on that are the same as they were last week. I think Jay is trying to, since there's no ace to concern yourself with, really, um, trying to just give yourself the lift of knowing your ace is going in the second game. If you listen to uh, Joe Healy back in first hour, he said that Missouri's best starter is Javen Pimentel, who actually pitched for Jay Johnson at Arizona. Pimentel will go in game two against Luke Coleman, so kind of a Drew Beam, uh, Luke Coleman situation from last week. Uh, so we'll see what LSU does there. We'll break it down with Chris Blair and again, of course, on tomorrow's show. Um, LSU football... Transfer portal's open, and you're just kind of looking for defensive linemen. I'm doing probably the same thing that most of you doing are listening are doing, and that is looking on Twitter for the on three folks and the 24-7 folks and the rivals folks and whoever to say, hey, X players in the transfer portal. And then you look at the position, you go, okay, he's a wide receiver. I don't really care. Okay, he's a safety. I don't care. He's a defensive tackle. What? What's his name? What, what are his stats? Okay, let's look. That's that's kind of where I am right now. <laughs> you show me a defensive tackle that showed up in the transfer portal, I'm all of a sudden interested because I know that's where LSU is shopping. On uh, Tuesday's show, we talked about Patrick Jenkins from Tulane, who is not in the transfer portal yet, if he is going to be. Uh, we talked about Bear Alexander from USC, who is not in the transfer portal yet, but we'll see. Uh, we talked about Philip Blitty from Indiana, who is in the transfer portal and has visited LSU. And there are a couple more names that I'd like to talk about today. Um, not that I have any inside sources that would suggest that they are considering LSU or visiting LSU or that LSU has any interest in them. I know two things about these two men. 
I know that they are defensive tackles, and I know that they're in the transfer portal. That's <laughs> that's all you have to check off to get into this segment. Again, if you're a tight end, I don't care. If you're not in the transfer portal, I probably don't care. But if you're a defensive tackle and you're in the transfer portal, I care. So I'll tell you about these two guys who have showed up in the last uh, last little bit. Simeon Barrow is a six foot three, three hundred pound defensive tackle from Michigan State. He arrived in East Lansing in 2020. He redshirted during that weird COVID season where the Big Ten was going to play and then they weren't going to play and then they were going to play and then they did and then they did play, but they only played six games. He redshirted that year. Didn't count. Didn't count for anybody, but that's what it says. He didn't have any statistics. He did play the next three years, and he has one year left to play. Last year, as a defensive tackle at Michigan State, he made 36 tackles. He had five and a half tackles for loss. He had three and a half sacks in 12 games. Um, This is fine with me. This is an old dude who's played in the Big Ten, who has amassed some statistics, has not been a career backup, and has the requisite size. Like, I'm not trying to find Glenn Dorsey here. I continue to say that. We are not trying to find... If you get that, huh, fantastic. If Jaden Daniels walks through that door as a defensive tackle, I'll take it. We're looking for Jarek Bernard Converse here. We're looking for Joe Fouché here. We're looking for Logan Diggs here. We're looking for a serviceable Southeastern Conference player out of the transfer portal. And I think based on my complete inability as a football scout, but someone who is able to identify statistics on a sheet of paper, this looks like a pretty good ad. If they can get it done. Don't know if he's considering LSU. Don't know if he's been in contact with LSU. Don't know if he's interested in LSU. But this guy would stand to reason. It's not, been, it's not some guy who like is just getting benched. And that's why he is leaving in the spring transfer portal. That was my fear entering this whole thing. That you were going to end up with somebody, in a defensive tackle, who is coming to you because they can't play elsewhere. That's not the case with Simeon Barr. He has played for three years at Michigan State. So hopefully LSU can, can make a phone call there. The other who we know that has shown some interest in LSU is C.J. West. West is six foot two, 315 pounds, so a bigger guy. Um, and he's a Kent State project. Product, not project. Kent State product. Could be a project at LSU if he decided to come here. Uh, he will be a fifth year senior as well. Uh, this past season at Kent State as a defensive tackle, seven tackles for loss and two sacks. Again, defensive tackle's job is not necessarily to roll up statistics. The defensive ends and linebackers get most of the sacks, the linebackers, safeties, make most of the tackles. Defensive end's job is to not get your butt kicked and get knocked out of the hole and washed out of the play. He's a big dude, and he's played a lot of football, and he's old. In his three years playing at Kent State, he had amassed 19 and a half tackles for loss and seven sacks over three seasons. Yeah, I think there is probably, I have not done the research on this, and I don't know if anybody has, there's probably a better correlation with Power 5 guys going to Power 5 schools than with lower-level guys moving up. Jaden Daniels as a two-year, three-year starter in the Pac-12 coming to Baton Rouge, probably a better chance he's a good player. Talking about Jameer Gibbs going from Georgia Tech to Alabama, probably a better chance. Jamison Williams going from Ohio State to Alabama, better chance. Logan Diggs coming from Notre Dame to LSU, better chance. Landon Jackson left LSU, went to Arkansas, it was great for them. Same thing goes for, um, oh, I'm blanking on the corner's name. They called him Nudie McLaughlin, Dwight McLaughlin. Um, live radio is fun. Uh, but like, it just, I feel like there's a better hit rate on P5 to P5. Not that Kyron Lacey hasn't been good. The jar for Bernard Converse was, was all I said. Now look, you had Deuce Chestnut come over and that didn't work out. Denver Harris came over and it, it didn't work out. So there's nothing that's certain. But based on very little knowledge and just a hunch, I feel like Simeon Barrow probably a better player than C.J. West. But I don't know that. Maybe C.J. West is ready to man up and get in a different scheme and be a dog in the SEC. But I guess the 
overarching theme of this, when you look at the transfer portal, there are a lot of options for LSU, and they're going to find a way to make one of them happen. Hopefully two. But if you walked away with Simeon Barrow, Philip Blitty, and or Patrick Jenkins, who again is not in the transfer portal, um, I would feel better about the football team. It's a very concerning thing to sit here and look at an LSU football team and wonder if the other team's not just going to be able to snap the football, hand it to the running back, and power straight ahead for five or eight yards. Like, that's the quickest way to lose. If you simply cannot man up at the point of attack between the tackles, you got no chance. Because then you got to start bringing numbers down and linebackers have to commit up and there comes safeties creeping down inside eight yards and then you're going to get cooked on the outside. Like, if you can't stop the run, you will have no chance. Even in this era of spreading the field, basketball on grass, score 50 points, wing it all over the place, if a team realizes they can just hand it off and right down the chute, they're not throwing it all over the place. They're going to go on an 11-play, 68-yard drive for a touchdown that takes eight and a half minutes off the clock. I don't want any part of that. Got to get some defensive tackles. As more guys continue to enter the transfer portal, we'll update you on them. I'm not going to pretend like I've got all the information on a Kent State defensive tackle or a Michigan State defensive tackle. It certainly would help if some of these guys grew up in Louisiana. <clears throat> Patrick Jenkins. Um, but we'll see. As uh, these things continue to happen, we will continue to get you that information. All right, uh, some LSU football we'll put in the rearview mirror. We'll chat with Chris Blair from Columbia, Missouri. Coming up next, you're listening to a Thursday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Fired up for this afternoon and evening. Alumni Hall in Perkins Row is hosting a meet and greet with some of LSU's women's basketball stars, and it is free from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. today. I'll be there from 4 to 6, but the signing will be 6 to 7. Michaela Williams will be there. Anissa Morrow, a couple of starters from this past year's team. Samaya Smith, who unfortunately got hurt early. Izzy Besselman, Aliyah Del Rosario. They'll all be at Alumni Hall in Perkins Row to sign autographs and take photos with you. They're going to have some awesome giveaways. And while you're there, you can shop around for the huge selection of LSU apparel and accessories. You can also find uh, Alumni Hall on Facebook at Alumni Hall LSU. Um, look, it's uh, it's going to be a great opportunity to to meet some of these players, take some photographs, get some autographs, do some shopping, really have a great time on this Thursday. So whether you're a huge LSU women's basketball fan, if you've got a kiddo in your house who's a huge LSU women's basketball fan, go have some fun out there at Alumni Hall in Perkins Road tonight from 6 to 7 p.m. I'll be there from 4 to 6 hanging out. So if you want to come at that point, you can, but I'm not as interesting as the LSU women's basketball team. So we hope to see all of you out there from 6 to 7 p.m. tonight at Alumni Hall in Perkins Road. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. a mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know so go the extra mile it's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there mercedes-benz vans I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. 
Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Sandiger, join me and Jimmy out for the Friday edition of Live at Lunch from Rafino's on Highland Road. It's do or die for the Pelicans in the play-in and LSU baseball on the road at Missouri. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. Friday on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. While you're busy with spring cleaning, we'd like to add to the clutter in your bank account to the tune of $2,000. It's the 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge Spring to Ching, powered by Citizens Bank and Trust. Register today at 104.5 ESPN.com. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Rouse's Supermarkets. Chugging right along here on a Thursday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show. Let's go to Columbia, Missouri. That's where we find the voice of the Tigers, Chris Blair, with us every Thursday on the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Chris, how are you? Doing great, man. Doing great. Temperatures in the seventies, and uh, we'll get to see that for maybe another twelve hours, and then that's uh, <laughs> then it's going to get a little cool up here. It is. Um, I don't know anything about Columbia, Missouri. I've heard of Shakespeare's Pizza. Uh, is it a nice town? Yeah, downtown's pretty nice. It's not a bad place if you got to go somewhere for four days in the SEC. Um, Shakespeare's has certainly got the atmosphere. A couple of places right there on uh, the main drag that are pretty nice, and. Uh, Again, not a bad town. My uh, my cousin went to Missouri, and he pulls for LSU. So, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I've never, I've I never completely been. understand that. <laughs> uh, what's the environment like in that stadium? I'm thinking it's un, it's unlike any other in the SEC. Uh, yeah, it's unlike any other. It's uh, it's probably. Um, I mean, you think about some of the great ballparks and 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 how the SEC and when it comes to baseball facilities, that race that that goes on year after year with what you have and obviously in Baton Rouge and uh, in Starkville and now in Bryan College Station. Tennessee is about to come online next year with the, their new iteration of, of uh, Lindsey Nelson. Uh, Mizzou, not so much. Um, it's, it's just an older ballpark, uh, pretty tight, uh, aluminum bleachers. Um, and I tell you what, the, the crosswinds up here when we landed today, which are expected to be kind of with us the rest of the weekend, uh, it's pretty windy. Um, so we'll see how it plays. I, I mean, most people will tell you that there's never like a continuous blowing out wind or blowing in wind. It just kind of swirls around. So uh, it's an intimate setting uh, at the baseball park here at Mizzou. The pitching rotation for uh, both teams has been announced. It'll be Gage Jump on Friday, Luke Holman on Saturday, and TBA again on Sunday. What do you make of that? You know, I, I think some of it has to do with, again, trying to keep guys where they're, you know, now where they are. I mean, now that we're headed to the back half of the season. So I think some of that has to do with Jay wanting to keep guys, you know, with an even rest. Cause you had those two weeks mixed up in there where you either lost a day or, or last week, actually for Luke Holman, he gained a day. Um, so I think just kind of the groove there. Um, I don't read a whole lot into it. Uh, Missouri's a team that offensively, you know, I think their team batting average is 252, a little lower than that in the SEC play. Um, so I don't think it's, so much to do with Missouri as much as it has to do with 
with LSU. And, you know, I think you and I have talked about it before. I, I can I can run on Gage Jump to get you off to a good start, pitch a, a good game. And if he pitches better than he has the last two outings, I think LSU will be okay. Luke Coleman, you kind of know what you're going to get there. Again, he's going to go out and compete. It, to me, it just comes down to what comes out of the bullpen because that's been the, the toughest problem, that and, and the inability to score runs. And, again, that puts more pressure on your bullpen when you get late in the game. What have you observed from Jay at this 3-12 uh, this and 12 start? Not a spot he's been in. Yeah, no, I think he's he's kind of really went back, you know, just talking to him about, you know, there's no need to hit a panic button. Uh, you know, he has talked to me and, and has said it publicly. I mean, there's been times in his coaching career when it hasn't been like 2023. So he's been there before. Uh, but I think, you you know, he was it was pretty telling yesterday in the media session that, you know, you can get angry. Um, you can throw players under the bus if you want. Uh, but ultimately he's responsible and, and he feels like he and the staff maybe now need to, to work extra hard to kind of figure out what is it uh, that's going to get the best out of this team. And, you know, they have a positive attitude. It was a positive feel flying up today uh, on, you know, starting the second half uh, of the SEC season. So, um, you know, Missouri's a team that's five and 10 in the league. Um, again, their offensive numbers are not going to knock you over. So you have to figure out like, can you go ahead and, and win a series, your first of the season? And I think this team also, Hunt, lacks a little bit of confidence, obviously, for, for a number of reasons. But if you can get it started here this weekend, I think because the coaches are, are kind of digging deep and, and calling upon themselves to be the leaders and see if they can get some of the leadership from the team. But they don't want to get into a situation where everybody's just negative um, because that's not going to prove – uh, to prove anything to come to fruition that's positive for LSU baseball. So I think there's a recommitment by this coaching staff, starting with Jay, that, hey, guys, we're going to get a positive going here. We're going to get some confidence going here. We're going to put you in positions that best suits your talent, your skill set, and helps the team. And uh, I mean, he said they've spent a ton of hours over the last several days uh, not really worried about Missouri. They Certainly they are, but it's more about what do we need to do to get LSU in a better position to win ball games, and and hopefully we'll see that come out starting tomorrow night. Look, Jay's actions and his words suggest that uh, the youth movement is here to stay. It's uh, it's Stephen Milam, it's Ashton Larson, it's some of Jake Brown, it's certainly uh, Aiden Moffitt, and uh, and also uh, Cam Johnson. I, I, what do you um, what do you think about the, the throwing those young guys out there who haven't played a lot and saying, "Hey, help us." No, I, I think that's – you're right. I mean, we talked about it last week before the Tennessee series. I mean, we felt like out of the bullpen you were going to see guys that you really hadn't seen in SEC play, and, and a handful of them we saw twice uh, in, a, in a pretty tough situation, hostile environment against a very good team in Tennessee. So I think, again, as you said, his words matched his actions, and I don't think it's going to change. And on Sunday you saw three true freshmen in the starting lineup. Uh, I think Ashton Larson has proven his point. There's – there's really no way you can take him out of the lineup. I mean, nobody's playing better than he is um, from from both standpoints. I mean, he made some incredible plays in right field that probably get overlooked in that Tennessee series, but he also batted 363, had some pretty good plays on the base pads as well. So, I mean, you, who, who are you going to take out? Um, I mean, who are you going to put in and take him out? So I think he solidified that. Um, you know, and I think Jake Brown's getting close to that. I, I, I think we might see some mix and match maybe in left or, or right field. Um, and maybe even center field before this weekend is done. But I got no problem with him going with the younger guys. I mean, that's the that's the future. And, and by this point of the season, everybody who's had the opportunity has either been able to make it or not. And uh, so <laughs> I'm all for giving guys that haven't had the, the, the number of at-bats and the number of innings to, to get a shot, try to put a spark in the arm of this team going down the stretch. This is a Hunt Palmer take, not necessarily something that's backed up anything, just my gut and, and how I, I think. But I feel like taking the field, knowing that, like, man, you lose lose two games this weekend, you lose the next game, like, your season can end with, like, three weeks left. Um, that's a tough way to take the field. Do you think that weighs on the guys mentally? Like, is there is there a much a mental issue as there is a physical issue out there? Well, I think it could, except I also think there was a lot of pressure coming off last year's season, whether people wanted to admit it or not. You know, a number of guys who didn't really contribute every single day came into this season as the national champs, and they found out really quick that every team they're going to face midweek or the weekend really relishes beating LSU. 
Um, and I think that pressure kind of affected them, especially early in these series. At this point, I mean, yeah, you, I, I think there's probably some talk to the fact that, guys, you've got to win basically every series, maybe get lucky and sweep a series uh, to hopefully solidify our opportunities for the postseason. Um, I would almost try to frame it if this is the coaching staff talking as a challenge to this team as a part, as opposed to, hey, guys, <laughs> this is the pressure cooker we're in. They certainly understand that. Um, but I think this team is, has had to face that already. So, you know, I, I don't know how much of that is going to affect them now because it's, it's obviously affected them the first part of the season. At this point, you're almost looking at your record going, hey, guys, we're playing with house money. Everybody else considers this out of the deal. The national champs are going to continue the curse of Mississippi State and Ole Miss. So what the heck? Let's go out, play baseball, have fun, and see if we can get some wins. My feeling is if they're going to sweep this series or maybe even win two of three, they need to blow them out one time. Like just win a 14-2 to two game and not burn all your pitching and not use Griffin Herring and like just put them in the rearview mirror and go. Um, that just needs to happen once. That has to happen three times. It needs to happen once, and they haven't really done that in any game this year. They got up in Starkville and gave it all back, and they got way up uh, in a game against Vanderbilt and basically gave it all back. Like, does it feel that way to you? Yeah, I think that's. I mean, I think that would be a huge shot in the arm for this team to be able to just win a game, pull away, no question. Fifth inning, this game is over. And, and as you said, they really haven't had that. Certainly in SEC play. And frankly, only a handful of times, maybe less than you can count on one hand, in the midweek games. And yeah. I think that could go a long way. So this is a team, I, I agree with you 100%, I think this is a team you can do that with because they have shown uh, a struggle to score runs as well. Now, give Missouri credit, they certainly have played better over the last couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, this is an opportunity to, again, I think go back to what Jay's talked about. And this team, with guys carrying much more of the load this season, different roles, you know, get some learning how to win, learning how to pull away, learning how to put an opponent away, and also going back to some building some confidence because there's some pretty good teams left on the schedule. I know it was a gauntlet to start, uh, but there's still some pretty good teams that obviously are going to get better as we get towards uh, middle and end of May. No doubt about it. Enjoy the call this weekend. Safe travels home. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Hunt. Be good. He's Chris Blair, voice of the Tigers. He's up there in Columbia. Jay Johnson show every single Monday from TJ Ribs. You want to hear the head man of LSU baseball? He and Chris are at TJ Ribs every single Monday, and you can certainly check that out uh, on the LSU Sports Radio Network or on demand at the uh, at the website lsusports.net. Chris is with us here every single Thursday. Take a time out. Big news in the world of collegiate athletics in one state. Is it going to spread, and how does it affect LSU? That's next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. ESPN Bet, ready to take you through all the huge sports moments this spring. The exclusive sportsbook of ESPN has it all, including offers and promotions from Scott Van Pelt and Stephen A. Smith. There's no better time to be a sports fan. New users get $100 in bonus bets for making any sportsbook bet. So download ESPN Bet today. What a play. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700 in partnership with the Bears Lake Charles. Terms and conditions apply. See app for details. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Or a warm meal, a movie night, 
and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other Moscona inviting you to join us for Thursday's AFR. The transfer portal is open. Four Tigers have already jumped in. We'll have the absolute latest. And LSU running back commit JT Lindsay joins the show. Hopefully you will as well. 3 to 6. 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Rouse's Supermarkets. Shout out to Rouse's, our sponsor, on Wednesday. Thursdays. It is Thursday. I think it's Wednesday because I didn't come in on Wednesday. It's Thursday. We're almost to the end of Thursday. The weekend is coming quickly. Rouse's brings you our Thursday shows each and every week. Looking to do your grocery shopping for the weekend? Make it Rouse's. Looking to boil some crawfish this weekend? Make it Rouse's. Looking to eat some crawfish that's already been boiled? Make it Rouse's. They also have an awesome hot bar for both breakfast and lunch. So if you're ever looking for a quick lunch, there's usually a Rouse's in the vicinity, especially if you're here in Baton Rouge. Get on in there. They've got a great salad bar, and they've got some stuff that's not quite as healthy as a salad that is really tasty. Uh, if you want to go that direction for a weekday lunch, appreciate Rouse's so much for bringing you our, uh, our Thursday shows each and every week. Uh, news out of the state of Virginia today. Uh, there was a law signed by Governor Glenn Youngkin that bypasses an NCAA rule that prevents schools from paying athletes under NIL guidelines. This law will take effect on July 1st, so in a few weeks. Uh, NIL rules enacted back in 2021 allow college athletes to agree to deals with local and national businesses that compensate them. This would allow schools to chime in and start paying athletes. In my opinion... This is the future. Basically, the players will become employees of the university. They'll be under contract, and they will receive money. I, I don't know that I see in eight years a lot of business people rallying around and cutting $1.5 million checks to high schoolers to come to their school. Like, when you opened the floodgates and there was money to be spent, yes. Get the checkbooks out. This is legal now. Let's ride. College Station, Austin, Tuscaloosa, Athens, Ann Arbor, Columbus, Baton Rouge. Like, let's go. But when you keep doing that, if you spend $4 million on a football signing class or whatever it is, and then half those players leave after a year and a half or two years. Do you really have the motivation to sprint right back over there and write another check? Like, I don't know. I, my belief, and this is, again, opinion because it's the brave new world, is that that market is going to correct itself. 
I've told this story multiple times, and we're dealing with all kinds of sports here, but this is not a Baton Rouge situation. Um, it's not an LSU situation. I have a buddy who works in finance who has a coworker who was dealing with a collegiate athlete as a money manager. And this collegiate athlete had an opportunity to go play professionally or to stay at the current school. And the agreement for one more year of play in college was $1.5 million. That's kind of where things sit. That's $1.5 million for a year to not go play professionally. And so if that's the case with player X, it stands to reason that that's the case in a lot of different places around the country. Um, and I just don't know how long people are willing to do that. I think that it is an impossibility for us to return to the everything's under the table, collegiate athletes aren't getting paid. That is way, way done, and I think everyone listening is well aware of that. Like, that ship has sailed. But I think people's willingness to dole out tons of cash when the return on investment is very, very small, eventually that doesn't work. And so what we're going to do, in my opinion, is take revenues from these massive television contracts that the schools receive and just start working with it from there. And no, that doesn't put LSU on exactly, le exactly level footing with Texas A&M. Texas A&M's boosters have more money. Now, looking at the class they just signed, are they going to be that fired up to go and do that with a bunch of high school kids again? I don't think so. But if the next Mike Evans shows up, if they feel great about Connor Wigman, the earning opportunity goes through the roof. And that, in my opinion, is where is the way this thing should be structured. Earn those NIL dollars. I don't know how much of a market you create for yourself by going out and playing 2A football and running for 6,000 yards and 86 touchdowns. Like, maybe, but how do we know that's going to translate? Now, you show up as a sophomore, and you're a first-team All-American? Let's start sharing the revenue. Let's get the car uh, dealership involved. Let's go do autograph signings and make money and, and create a lot of worth. And then if you get into a situation where there needs to be a bit of a negotiation on, okay, do you want to go to the next level, whether it's the NBA or the NFL? Or do we want to talk about, we've got these funds here. We're allowed to pay you. Like, what does this look like? And that's basically the model in professional sports. You're under contract. Do you want to renegotiate this? Is this not satisfactory? Okay, there's the transfer portal. But it's not... <laughs> excuse me. You're seeing reports... That, like Jeff Goodman put out a tweet a couple weeks ago. He said, getting reports from coaches that they've heard multiple solicitations from representation from representatives of college basketball players saying they want a million and a half, but they're not even in the transfer portal. I feel like you can kind of cut that out. Well, you can't cut it out, but like curb that need to go remarket yourself every year by saying, okay, we've got some money here. Let's make it work. Like, it's a, it's a whole new world. I get it. And it's not one that a lot of people are comfortable with. And that's okay. But the reality is we're not going backwards. And I don't think what we're doing right now is sustainable. I think what I'm going to tonight is awesome. This event at Alumni Hall where five members of the LSU women's basketball program that have done a great job inside the program, won a lot of basketball games, galvanized this community around a sport that was asleep three years ago. And they have an opportunity to represent a business, to create interest in their program, and create young fans and memories for people that care about the women's basketball team. And they earn a little bit of money from a business in Baton Rouge that stands to gain from the crowd that they'll attract. That's great to me. How anyone can have a problem with that, I, I don't know. I'm a little weary of some of the stuff that does go on, though, with a, a high school senior just basically holding out his hand saying, I need all the cash. 
And then you got people who, well, I'm in the transfer portal. Where's all the money? Okay, now I'm going back. Like this Caden Proctor situation is a little weird where he's at Alabama and then he transfers to Iowa for a semester and now he's going back to Alabama. Some of the stuff I'm, I have a little bit of a hard time with. Some of the stuff I'm so on board with. But if we can create a situation that puts some guardrails in where the schools who have these hundreds of millions of dollars coming in from television networks that can make decisions based on how they want to structure their roster. Right now, like coaches are basically at the mercy of like, okay, let me get on the phone with these seven rich guys, these seven rich ladies, and find the money to get this guy in or keep this guy. Well, if it's all done in-house, you just allocate the money where you want it. I need that guy. I need that girl. Let's find the money to make it work. Well, this player said that he or she wants more money. Well, we don't have any allocated there, so you're going to have to hit the transfer portal if you care about money that much. If you're not as interested in being a part of the, the program that you committed to and going to class and do, you just want the cash, well, we don't have that much, so you may have to look for it elsewhere. And that's the way that it works in Major League Baseball. I'm working on a free agent deal. I'm only negotiating with you right now because I'm under contract with you through the end of the year. And I can sign an extension and make this work. Or if I want to test the market, I can do that if you're not willing to pay me more than that. It's it's a professional model, but we're in professional sports. And I would feel more comfortable if everybody were kind of doing things the same. And again, you know how I stand on this. Y'all, if you listen to me for two years, this NIL stuff, how does it affect LSU? How does this allow LSU to win or lose? And I think that LSU stands a better chance to keep up with A&M and Texas and Alabama and Georgia and Ohio State if they're taking money from inside the athletic department and supplement that with the boosters that are writing checks. Because make no mistake, LSU's boosters are writing checks. I don't know who it is or where the money's coming from, but Ed Ogeron's not getting it done. Pay the monster buyout. Pay all of it. We're going to give you the entire thing. And your staff, gone. Bring in Brian Kelly for $100 million. And his first staff. Two years in, the defensive staff stinks. Gone. Write all their buyouts. Hire new coaches. Blake Baker's over $2 million. Like, they're spending money. And I feel pretty comfortable... I don't know, but I feel comfortable saying on the radio, I doubt getting the commitment from the number one running back in the nation, the number one wide receiver in the nation, and the number one quarterback in the nation, two of which are not from Louisiana, probably wasn't free. That's my guess. LSU keeps finding the money. So they have boosters that are willing to do it. And if you could create something in-house here that runs like an organization, like the Chicago Cubs or the Las Vegas Raiders, the Atlanta Hawks, like, okay, I think LSU can keep up in that way. Having to just, having a coach's responsibility to continue to make the same 8, 10, 12 phone calls to the same guys going, yeah, got a defensive end on campus last uh, last week. This is what we heard. Yeah, had the point guard in from uh, West Virginia that we're trying to recruit. This is what I need. Okay. Yeah, this uh, this this starting pitcher. He, this is what he's he's demanding. We got to call this. If, if it's all in house, like the coach knows what he's working with. I don't pretend to have been in the middle of any of this stuff. I'm not Gordon McKernan, who's done an incredible job at helping student athletes financially, and he knows how all this works. And I don't. I'm not in the meetings. I'm not signing the contracts. I'm not writing the checks. I don't. I don't know how all of it works, and I don't. I would never sit here and, and insist that I do. But to me, a little bit of uniformity in allowing LSU to dip into some university athletic department funds as opposed to continuing to hit up the same people over and over again seems like a better way to try to keep up. Again, if you're just catching in going, what's he talking about? Virginia signed a law on Thursday that allows states, colleges, and universities to directly pay athletes through name, image, and likeness deals. 
Originally, that was not allowed. It had to come from businesses. Now, there's a law in Virginia, not in Louisiana, but you realize how these things work. Once, <laughs> once, once the state of Alabama puts this in, if you think Louisiana is going to lag behind there when it comes to college sports, I got news for you. Same thing goes for Georgia and Texas and Ohio. Like Once somebody gets a leg up, which Virginia just got, it's not far behind everywhere else. Again, I'd rather talk about what goes on on the field, but none of that matters if you don't have any players. And the fact of the matter is to get players, got to have the cash. We'll close things up on the Hunt Palmer Show next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. One Bath and Closets. OneBathandClosets.com is the website. David Duvall and his team redesigning and remodeling bathrooms and closets for 30 years. You spend a lot of time in the bathroom, just the way it is. How about updating it? Maybe it's a full-scale renovation. You do floors, plumbing, new shower. They can do it all at One Bath and Closets. You don't have to call three or four different contractors to get the different steps in the process done. One call to one contractor. That's one bath and closets. Maybe it's not a full-scale renovation or remodel. You're okay with it, but you know what? I don't use that tub. This house is a little bit older. I could use an update here. Take that tub out that you don't ever use. Put in a glass walk-in shower. Changes the functionality of your bathroom. Changes the aesthetic of your bathroom. Adds a little value to your home as well. Get that free consultation. You can find it online at onebathandclosets.com. See their five-star reviews. There's a dozen or plus of them right there on the website. And you can also request that free consultation, as I said. It's One Bath and Closets at onebathandclosets.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always...
on Friday's OTB. Let's do a deep dive on LSU, Mizzou. Can baseball right the ship? Man. For Pelicans fans, the day of reckoning is at hand. Can they escape the play-in? Off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. Live After 5 is back this spring. Clock out and rock out with us Fridays from April 12th through May 24th in downtown Baton Rouge for the free concert series, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., Join us for another season filled with incredible music, delicious food, talented artists, and a lively second line parade. Tomorrow night, come out to see Kenny Neal for Live After Five. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Rouse's Supermarkets. All right, closing up shop here on a Thursday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show, presented by Rouse's. Um, excited for Friday's show. Always brought to you by Corks. And we'll talk LSU Missouri with Chris Tamui. Uh, we'll get you ready for the Pels and the play in. And of course, we will uh, we'll talk a little more Saints and Transfer Portal as well. But for today, we just got one more order of business that is take it or leave it. All right, first one here Oregon basketball is doing away with its deep in the woods court design. Take it or leave it. I will take this. I'll take um, it. That is the ugliest court in college basketball. It's pretty bad. I'm okay with some character in your court. I thought it was cool, and Jordan's pulled up Oregon's here. And it's all these... I couldn't tell what it was for, like, years. I thought it was like a Rorschach test thing on the middle of the floor, but it's all these trees around the 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 sidelines. And it's just so distracting. Like, I feel like the players should be able to see where the lines are. And to, like, obscure them with trees is so weird. Like, I thought when Mississippi State put all the counties in Mississippi around the outline, I thought that was a cool little little thing. You're watching the game. You can see your county right there is kind of tying the state together. I'm okay with, you know, some big logos and um, some darker floors I'm okay with as well. But putting weird floors everywhere with trees is just bad. I, I don't – I don't. it's too confusing. I don't like a lot of courts that have, like, three three-point lines on them either. Let's just make things easy. It's a basketball court. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's a good move on the Ducks' part there. All right, moving on. Haley Van Lith has decided she's going to transfer to TCU, taking her talents to Texas. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. I think I'll she'll do it. well there. I don't know anything about TCU's women's basketball program. I know that LSU is not going to play them twice next year. So uh, I was hoping that she didn't go to Mississippi State for kind of selfish reasons. I, I enjoyed uh, watching Haley play this year. I thought she – played really admirably and when everyone realized she was out of position but had to do it for the best of a team that had national title aspirations um, and she wants to try something else I, I don't blame her for that and certainly it doesn't sound like in her uh, sound bites that Kim Mulkey blamed her for it either um, again I don't know anything about TCU other than it's in Fort Worth and Fort Worth's a nice place so uh, I wish her a lot of success unless she plays LSU in which case I'll, I'll pull for the <laughs> Lady Tigers but I think uh, I think that's a good thing. All right, next one here. Uh, staying in the women's game, UConn head coach Gino Uriema said a one-and-done rule in women's college basketball would, quote, ruin the game, saying it depends whether you want to grow the game or kill it. If you want to kill it, let the kids leave after freshman year. Take it or leave it. I will leave it. And I believe that Gino Uriema will not be coaching UConn's women's basketball team in two years. He has had it with NIL. He has had it with the transfer portal. He wants it the way it was when he was going 40-0 and every single year, and he just hates this. It's obvious from every press conference that he does. Um, I don't. I, I vehemently disagree that the one-and-done rule would ruin women's college basketball. There are so few women who could make that jump. It's just the, a fact. In the NBA, there are, there are 30 teams in – Lots of roster spots. In the WNBA, first-round picks get cut like that. Like, there's no, there are no roster spots. And so they're just, I just I can't think of a, a woman that's coming. Like, Michaela Williams, who had a really good freshman year, was the fourth best player on her college team. I think she was, she was a top-five player in the country. There just aren't that many players. Caitlin Clark was at Iowa for three years. I just don't think that there would be that many players, if any, that would be ready to leave women, girls high school basketball, which is quite a stretch from the WNBA, play for one year and go. I mean, I can't. Yeah. Simone was incredible. I don't know if she was ready to play in the WNBA at 18 and a half. 
I just I don't think it would be a, ba- a factor. Like I don't care. They want to keep him in college for three years. That's that's fine. It's the WNBA's prerogative. But there just aren't that many that can can make that leap. There weren't that many men that could make the leap. All right, last one here. 14 players for the Colorado football team enter the transfer portal this week. But Coach Deion Sanders said, we're good. We're making a big deal out of nothing. Trouble in prime land. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Uh, I'll this take is not going to work. It's just not. You cannot run a college football program without at all trying to recruit high school players. I mean, Dion has said he's not trying to recruit high school players. He doesn't go on visits. He's trying to save Colorado some money. Like, I think Deion Sanders is good for college football because he's interesting and he's brought some life to a place that had no life in Colorado. I don't believe at all in the way he's approaching this thing. He's got his two sons asking for DMs for transfers. I mean, he's got maybe the most talented quarterback in the country who happens to be his son. What happens when he leaves? Like, I, it, it, this, this whole thing seems entirely unsustainable. They got off to that wild start scoring a bunch of points and then had a very mediocre season um, by college football standards. It was a step up for Colorado. I just don't believe you can let everyone leave every April and let everybody back in uh, at the end of April and then try to field a football team. I think that's destined for not very good. Now, the question is, what would it take for Colorado to move on from Dion? Because I don't think they expect him to do very much there. So you keep winning six or seven games, throw a party. But as far as him making them some kind of power or using this as a jumping point for another job, I just don't see it happening. That's it for us here on this Thursday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show. I'm headed to Alumni Hall in Perkins Row with a lot of the Lady Tigers basketball team. Come and see us from 6 to 7. We're back tomorrow, same time, same place. Matt's about to drive you home on After Further Review. It's 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh, shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard.